Hi, welcome! So in this video, I'm just going to go through two examples of doing kinematic problems involving position, velocity, and acceleration. The first problem will have us doing derivatives, and the second problem will have us integrating. So for the first example, let's suppose a projectile in motion has a position given by r of t is equal to t, t cubed minus 10, and e to the t, for some time t. And let's find the velocity and acceleration vectors at t equals 5. So in both of these examples, don't worry about units. You can imagine that if there were units on these problems, I trust that you could figure them out. But we're just going to focus on the math part and not to worry about too much about the units part. Although the units part probably is sort of the math part, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. So if you want, you can pause the video now and try this out, finding the velocity and acceleration vectors at t equals 5. Okay, so I'm going to start by finding the velocity vector. So the velocity is the derivative of my position, so r prime of t, and I'm going to use v of t to represent it. So I just take the derivative of each of the components, so the derivative of t is 1, the derivative of t cubed minus 10 is 3t squared, and the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. And so this is my velocity vector, and to find the velocity at t equals 5, we're just going to substitute in 5 for t. So the velocity at 5 is 1, then we do 3 times 5 squared, and e to the fifth. And I'll just go one more step and simplify. So our velocity is 1, 75, e to the fifth. And there we go. That's it. We're going to repeat this process for the acceleration. So the acceleration is the second derivative of our position or the first derivative of our velocity, which is the vector we found at the beginning of the previous part. And I'm going to use a of t to represent the acceleration. So I'm just taking the derivative of my velocity vector. So the derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of 3t squared is 6t, and the derivative of e to the t is e to the t. So similar to the last part, I want to find the acceleration at 5, so I'm going to substitute in 5 for t. I'm getting 0, 6 times 5, and e to the 5th, which is 0, 30, e to the 5th as my acceleration vector. So not too bad. We were given position, we needed to find velocity and acceleration, we just took the derivatives and substituted in the value we were looking for. Alright, so for our second example, we're going to be doing some integrating rather than differentiating. So let's suppose an object has acceleration that is given by a of t is equal to 8t sine of 2t and 1. So along with this, I'm going to give us the following initial conditions and ask you to find the velocity and position vectors. So I'm going to give you an initial position and an initial velocity, and that's going to help us find the vectors that are specific to this problem. So for the initial position, let's say r of 0 is equal to 0, negative 7, 2. And for the initial velocity, let's say v of 0 is equal to 3, 1 half, negative 5. Just a comment too, we use 0 as the time for the initial position or the initial velocity, since 0 is like the time that we start, so it's the initial time. Okay, so this one is a little more tricky. You could try it out on your own if you'd like. At least try to find the velocity vector by integrating. See how far you can get. Maybe you can go all the way and find us the velocity and position vectors using the initial conditions. So give it a shot and then come back once you've tried it. Okay, so we need the velocity and position vectors, so I'm just going to work my way up. I was given the acceleration, I want to go one step up to velocity first. So the velocity is v of t, which is the integral of a of t dt. And what I do to find this is I just integrate each of the components. So my first component is the integral of 8t dt, my second component is the integral of sine of 2t dt, and my third component is the integral of 1 dt. 
So I'm going to go a bit quickly through the actual integrating. Some of these you might wanna use a U substitution on, but I'm not gonna walk through that whole process. I'm gonna assume that you can do that on your own if you need to, and I'll just go forward with the integrals. So the antiderivative of 8t is 4t squared, since we increase the power by one and divide by the new exponent. And then we have a plus c there. For the next integral, the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine, and with that 2t, we're going to have a 1 half out front. Again, we'll have our plus c there as well. Then lastly, the antiderivative of 1 is just t, and we also have a plus c here. So we found our velocity vector, but the hard part here, or the part that takes a little more work, is just going to be to find those plus c's. At least in my opinion, that's kind of the hard part. It might not be the hard part for you, but I think just remembering to do this and doing it carefully can be a little challenging. So I wrote all of these as just plus c, but really these are different constants, most likely. So I'm gonna label them as c1, c2, and c3. So we need to find these c values. And we're going to use the initial conditions to do that. So we were told that the initial velocity, so the velocity at time equals zero, is equal to three, one half, negative five. But we now also have a formula for the velocity at a time. And so we can substitute in time equals zero into the formula we found and set it equal to this vector we were given. So if I substitute in zero for t, I'm gonna write it all out here. I won't say it because it's a little boring to do, but I'm putting in zero for t and now I'm gonna simplify. So in my first component, I'm doing four times zero squared plus c1, so that's just c1. Then in my second component, I have the cosine going on. So that's cosine of zero, which is one, so I'm going to have negative 1 half times 1 plus my c2. And then in my final component, I plugged in 0 for t, so I just have c3. Now, I know that 3 1 half negative 5 is my initial condition, and so I can set that equal to this new vector I found. So the x components are equal, the y components are equal, and the z components are equal. So this tells me that 3 is my c1, 1 half is equal to negative 1 half plus c2, and negative 5 is c3. Then I just have a little work to do with my c2, so I'm going to add the 1 half to the other side, and I'm getting that c2 is equal to 1. So I found my constants. I needed to just go through the step of substituting in t equals 0 and solving, and so I get my velocity vector now, and I'm going to replace my c values with what I found. So I'm getting that the velocity is 4t squared plus 3, negative 1 half cosine of 2t plus 1, and t minus 5. And there we go. That's my velocity vector. So I'm halfway there. Now I just need to do the same process but find the position. So if you're feeling a little more confident now, you might just want to pause and try to find the position now on your own, but I'm going to keep going forward, so just know that's an option if you want it. Obviously, you can pause at any point, any time if you want, but I just wanted to highlight that because I think you might be able to do that now without me. Okay, so repeating this process for the position, we're going to use r of t, and that's equal to the integral of v of t dt. And I'm simply integrating each of the components. So I'll write that out here. Then going through each of the antiderivatives, in my x component, I'm going to have 4 thirds t cubed plus 3t plus my c. In my second component, I'm going to have negative 1 fourth sine of 2t. That comes from the chain rule and doing that the antiderivative of cosine is sine. And then I have plus t plus c. And then in my third component, I have 1 half t squared minus 5t plus c. Again, these c values are most likely different, so I'm going to label them differently. I'm going to have c1, c2, and c3. And now I'm going to do the work to find those c values. So we use the initial condition. We were told that the position at time equals 0 is 0, negative 7, 2. But now I also have this vector that represents the position. So I'm going to substitute in 0 for t and then simplify. So I'll write that out here. I put in a bunch of zeros. My first component, I have 0, 0, c1. Then my second component, I'm taking the sine of 0, which is 0, so I only am left with c2, 
And then in my third component, I have zero and zero and then C3. So setting each of the components equal, I have zero is C1, negative seven is C2, and two is C3. So this time I could really just take the initial position, the zero, negative seven, two, and use those as my values. But as we saw with the velocity, it's not always quite that simple. You do need to go through this process and make sure that you're finding each of the C values. Now I can just write out my final solution for the position. I'm getting 4 thirds t cubed plus 3t. Then I have negative 1 fourth sine of 2t plus t minus 7. And lastly, I have 1 half t squared minus 5t plus 2. And that is my position vector. Okay, so that is it for that example. This time we integrated, we just had to do some extra work using the initial conditions to find our specific plus C values. These are not the only examples that we can do with position, velocity, and acceleration, but I think this is a good representation of quite a few of the options of problems that you might see using these concepts. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.